I love Mario Kart. I have a long history with the game. It was the first console game I ever got to play, and in college, it was one of the main ways that me and my friends would hang out. I'm not good at it, but I love it. I also love other Nintendo games. I love Legend of Zelda and Pokemon. And you already know that I love bringing my crafty side to video games because of when I made this little guy, a Keys from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So when the opportunity came to go to the new Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Hollywood, I had to take it. I mean, it would be a trip with my college friends who are the ones who reintroduced me to Nintendo and Zelda and Pokemon and Mario in the first place. But I wanted to do a project with it and that's where all this started. My first thought was that it would be a lot of fun to pelt my friends with blue shells, red shells, and green shells, and I thought I could just whip up a bunch of those, like crochet them with some nice blanket yarn, they'd be nice and soft. I did see some problems with that though, notably stuffing them into my carry-on along with whatever else I would need for the trip, and um, I don't know if security would love the idea of me throwing even plushies at my friends, but the trip is getting kind of close, so I did make it, and I am proud of it. It like, it works. Uh, and it is pretty fun to throw at people because I stuffed it pretty lightly. But the thing is, while I was making these, I started thinking about hexagon cardigans and that maybe it would be cool to make a full cardigan out of hexagons. And maybe instead of making a blue shell plushie, I could just turn myself into a blue shell. And then I was describing this idea to my husband and he said the words that changed this entire video. He goes, oh, well, if you make a cardigan based on a blue shell, it could be a Mario Kartigan. Mario Kart again. And so now we stand on the precipice of what might be the strangest video idea I've ever had. But when someone hands you Mario Kart again, you can't ignore it. <laughs> so I am here shopping for my yarn for my Mario Kart again. And I'm trying to decide what kind of yarn I want. I guess no matter what, the bigger the yarn, the easier it's going to be, right? My eventual plan is to have three different types of hexagons that I'll be like switching between when actually stitching them together. But for now, I don't want to open the new yarn I have yet. So I am using the end of the yarn from my rainbow blanket. And from that, I am making uh, just the solid hexagons because I'm not doing color changes for these. And uh, I've got eight so far, so it's going pretty well. I think I'm almost done with this. Like I might have one or two hexagons left in it. And then I will start some of the more fun ones, including this it's called the African flower it's a lot more dynamic when it has different colors so switching between the two different colors of blue I think will be really helpful but I'm gonna keep this one because we don't waste yarn in this house if we can avoid it I've got three weeks until I go to Universal and I would say I'm doing pretty well so far <laughs> I have this Tamara Pierce hoodie that I love, so I traced it to make a pattern to fill with hexagons. I don't have any fancy pattern paper, but I do have plenty of paper bags and they worked just as well for tracing. And to be extra cozy, I wanted to try actually having a hood on my cart again. Hello, uh, I've been crocheting these hexagons. I guess I'm going to need to also figure out like quarter and half hexagons to make the uh, edges perfect, but I'm sure that I can figure that out. I had to do something like that for the plushie that I've already made. And like the plushie, I have attached just using a nice single crochet. So that's kind of what I'm picturing. The ribbing is going to be done in white, like the edge of the shell. The seaming will all be done in white, just like I'm doing in between the hexagons. And then I'm not sure how I'm gonna handle the pockets. I have not decided yet if the center will have buttons or a zipper, but I will figure that out later, because right now I'm just gonna do some lying out of hexagons to see how everything's going to fit. So I have three extra ones, which gives me 22 because there are 19 on here and I've pretty much filled up the back. So that's, that's cool to know. And when I say filled up, I do mean just full hexagons because as you can see, there's like a three quarters hexagon here, a half one here, a half one here, three quarters one here, a couple little like 
triangles. So I'm gonna have to get creative with geometry here. And I know that the curves are, are important for like how it's gonna sit on my body. I'll probably end up finagling and just like making whatever shape will fit in there. But I think it's gonna be okay and I'm excited and I do think the different blues like look pretty good scattered across the back. In retrospect, I don't think I consciously made a decision to start with the back of the Mario cardigan, but I do think it was a good idea just for getting my feet wet, basically because it's the biggest space that I would need to cover with hexagons. So I've just finished filling in the bottom with just two half hexagons, which is pretty easy. I'm a little worried I'm gonna work on the neck and shoulder now. This one kind of looks like a pentagon. Maybe I'll be able to uh, make something that makes sense. This one is just weird. But if I learned anything from creating the half hexagon pattern, it's that drawing should help. So I'm gonna show you what I drew for the half hexagons and then I'll try to explain my thoughts for these two. This is what I was using for the half hexagons. So this is to create like a point. This is to create the half of the flat head. This is a whole thing, but here's a much bigger version of it. So basically you have the flat sides anywhere that there are just two and where you have the line and then the two double crochets, these are the points. So using this diagram, I think I should be able to create this shape. Okay, first draft is not a total failure. Uh, this side worked because that was just basically a normal hexagon thing. So I think the main thing is going to be turning all of these and these from double crochet into single crochet. I am going to call this not terrible and I think I will fasten this off and go take it to the pattern and see if it fits. Wow, okay, so like it's a little too tall. But in the grand scheme of that's pretty good. I'm I'm gonna call that good and done and that just any attaching will fix the problems there. I'm pretty happy. Time to write down what I did. This is where I'm pausing today. We've got one side filled in with the weird shape. I think it's gonna I think it's gonna be good, I think, when it's time to attach this. Hopefully I'm able to sort of make this piece work. The shoulders and neckline are done and I think they look really good. And then I've got the bottom complete. And I also think that is looking pretty great. Uh, this is the lone piece on this side. I still have to do the rest. I'm feeling pretty good. The only thing I'm worried about is that it might not read as Koopa Shell. And I don't even think that like me playing with the darker color and the patterns is that. I just think it's looking kind of small. And I wonder if I should have gone with bigger hexagons. But then I, on the other hand, I think when it gets to my arm, I think they're going to be the perfect size. And I don't think I would have wanted to switch between them. So we've got what we've got. And I've got two weeks, kind of two and a half weeks. So I just got to keep going. I'm learning a lot. And I'm really enjoying this, which, which is fun because I do feel like I can enjoy the journey this time. Well, now I'm making the other one of these pieces and I'm looking at my notes and I didn't write down how I did it. And I probably just assumed that I would remember. All I remember is using a bunch of single crochets for this very stark point. So I guess we're just experimenting again. Yay. This is what I ended up with. Because it's the opposite side of where I originally traced, I did need an opposite side of the pattern. And honestly, I, th I think it's gonna work once it's stretched. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be fine. I think this side is done. Uh, this piece came out much less dramatic than this piece, but I think that's okay. Currently, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do just a really quick single crochet in white all the way around. Eventually, there'll be ribbing, and then the attaching on the side to the sleeve is going to be done in white. So I don't think it'll interrupt that, but I just think it'll make it look a lot cleaner and help it like lie in the right position. So I do think I'm going to get started on that now. I think this was the right choice to do the edge especially because like when it comes to attaching I'm gonna want to make sure I have like good crochet markers and that I won't be I don't know like trying to make this work and I think this will be good for the ribbing too especially oh gosh um these were all just half double crochets along the bottom that was oh not fun to even do this uh outline in so I'm really glad that I've got that done now and when it's time to actually put everything together it's gonna be a lot easier so the back is done which means I think it's time to start doing basic hexagons again for the front panels and I say basic and then I remember that I want to do some granny square and some African violet flowers 
hexagons. So maybe I will do just like two or three of those. Maybe one of each per side and then one solid dark hexagon per side. I won't have them match, but they'll match in terms of percentage that it's dark. I think being able to like attach the top of the shoulder and like actually see how it fits my body is going to make me feel a lot better. And then I can work on the sleeves and the hood. That is important. I'm not trying to say it's not important, but like for being able to really see it and picture it and visualize it, I think I need the front panels to wear it. This is what 11 hexagons looks like. Here we are right now. This is 10 hexagons. Uh, the rest are all over there. So we've got a little like half piece there, a really cute little triangle piece there, a nice basic half there, a couple more little triangles. I'm not worried about any of those. I'm not even really worried about this one up here, but this is like, oh, that's kind of the pentagon shape that I have already done. So this might not be too difficult. Okay, I have no idea why I've been so chill about this entire thing, because I just realized I have two weeks until I go to Universal Studios and Nintendo World. But here's the problem. Next week, my friend who's going to Universal Studios with me gets here and we're going to be like exploring and going to museums and parks and, and making marshmallows and stuff. And then we're going to be in California visiting our friends. So. When am I gonna have time to finish this cardigan, if not in the next couple of days? I guess if my friend is in town, I could hypothetically teach her how to crochet and she could help me make some hexagons. I'm gonna file that away. <laughs> anyway, I need to finish the front of this cardigan or the front half of this cardigan today so I can sew it together at the back and try it on because I think that'd be really cool. And maybe that'll help ease my nerves because huh, it was hard to fall asleep last night with the realization that I did not actually have that long to finish this project. We're back at Michael's because I have run out of the light blue yarn. So let's hope they still have it here, yeah? I think it was this. trip and um, I, this is the color that I bought. I wasn't 100% sure if it was going to match but I think if it's not identical then it's as close as I was going to get. So I think the only piece I actually have to make on this front is this little cutout and then the little triangle here. I thought that I had gotten the correct brand size of yarn but um, this right here is the new piece and these are the old pieces and I can just tell that this is like smaller yarn. It looks a lot like holier when it's actually stretched like compare this piece and that piece right like they're the same piece. I bought four skeins of this so I'm gonna say there's not much I can do. I did save some hexagons for the other half so the front will at least hopefully look kind of consistent. But there's not much else I can do other than that, which is fine because I think it'll still, it'll still look cool. It'll still read as Koopa Shell, Blue Shell from Mario Kart. And remember that's, that's the goal. Am I disappointed? Yes. But these things happen with these projects, especially when you don't know how much yarn you're going to need. So you end up having to do multiple trips. It's just a part of it. Um, the good news is this yarn feels really soft. So that's, that's nice. And this was the only yarn of this color at Michael's, so there wasn't much else I could do. Oversized. Um, it's possibly bigger than uh, my jacket, but I mean, for better or for worse, it really reads blue shell, so that's cool. 
Okay, so I just stitched this panel on. It's definitely like way too big on me. So I don't wanna take the back apart because I did a lot of a lot of finagling on the back panel. So what I think I'm gonna do, because if I like pull it, it's pretty good. So I think I'm going to take this seam apart and then this seam apart. And then we'll basically have this length and this. And then I think if we like pull, then the side will at least look, oh, oh, this is gonna be a sleeve though, so it's fine. It'll look better. And then we'll have, you know, one, two, three, four, eight more hexagons to work with on the sleeve. So that'll be good. So let's do that now. So I'm just gonna take the panels apart and then remove some of the hexagons from the back. Let's do it. I'm so glad that I was lazy and didn't weave in the ends. It makes it so much easier. I think I have to leave the armholes the same because they're like matched between the pattern and the pattern for the um, sleeve. So I think I'm going to be focusing on, maybe if I just take out these three on each side, maybe these. Well, let's start with removing the border. And unfortunately this one, I did weave in the ends. Ugh. Everyone online always says, don't be like me, weave in your ends as you go. And I am here to tell you, no, it's okay. Wait until you're sure your silly thing works. Okay, that looks so much better. So we can take all this out now and then we can uh, take the other side apart too. I think this is the new back piece. These are the shoulders, we have the neckline, and then we have the sides. And I am going to leave the two like armpit pieces as is because I'm thinking as I build the sleeve, I might just build it to connect into these because why not, you know? I think that would be cool. So here we are. Obviously the front is not quite perfect because it is uh, asymmetrical now, but now because I shortened the back, there's no way that I am like taking this row off or it would only go to here. I'm not sure how I'm gonna end up closing this. I think I will save that for uh, another day. Oh, should I take this off, this little bottom one? I should, I should, shouldn't I? Okay, well that's not, that's not what I'm doing right now. What I'm checking is the back, which, oh, okay, let's. So you can see the back. I like that a lot better. I think it fits a lot better now. So happy with that. I'm just not gonna weave in the ends yet. Instead, I'm going to start working on the sleeves. And once those are on, then I can really figure out what I wanna do with the front. <laughs> okay, we, we have a sleeve. <laughs> Kind of, I, uh, if I'm honest, no idea, no idea, no idea how it got there. It, it appeared somehow um, through lots of error and stress and pulling stuff apart only to put it back together, but it exists and I'm fine with it. Uh, time to move on, I think. Um, eventually this will all be stitched up and there'll be ribbing, but shoot, I gotta make a second sleeve now. <laughs> Wow, this is the best craft store find ever. Oh my God, you're so cute. Can I say hello? Okay, so it's not done yet. I still have to 
patch this seam and I have to tie in a bunch of loose ends, but like this is kind of a jacket. And I went to Joanne's earlier today and I bought buttons that are really cool. So I think what I'm going to do is sew essentially an overlap panel and attach it here to go over here and that'll have buttonholes that are big enough to fit the buttons through and the buttons will be on here and then go over. I made a slightly bigger hexagon so there are 24 stitches but to compensate for that because I don't want the end of the hexagon to be any bigger I did in the second round instead of two double crochets in each stitch one double crochet one double crochet and then two double crochets because math and I got these nifty buttons from Joann's and uh, I used yarn to thread them. I used this funky little tool that you use to string needles. I just use it to get the yarn through there. It actually goes through pretty dang easily, but I also think it won't, you know, come off when I'm wearing it, hopefully. Let's not explore that right now. finished the uh, front placket this morning and I mean I think it works like I think I actually really like the fit and how it looks from like here down not psyched about the neckline I think I'll add the hood next just to see how that looks with everything how like the weight of it pulling back might affect the neckline worst case scenario I'll add pieces here but you know it's coming together which makes me really happy I really like the buttons. Maybe I should just do spikes down this, like lean into it. What do you think? You, oh, me you. And the yes, Not you. The audience, well, I'm probably also the audience. <laughs> I think that would probably look cool. It would just need to be like deliberate that it spikes and kind of. Like, she clear what it is. The sides would still work, though. Like, here and here? And glued on the sides. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> the blue shell is all spiky, right? Oh, it's yeah. all spiky. There's a part of me that wants to put wings on the back of the jacket. Like, like, like almost like embroidered, but crocheted. Ooh, I like that. But we'll see what happens. I like, I like this hood. The hood is my favorite part. Okay, so I haven't actually attached this yet. This is held on with uh, stitch counters, but... Oh, it looks really good. I love the hood. Still my favorite part. I always love a good hood. I'm just really happy with this right now. Morning, I did not, I did not sleep very well last night. Um, I'm feeling pretty garbage and uh, very worried about getting a migraine. So, gonna be honest, there's a part of me that doesn't want to crochet right now. There's a stronger part of me that knows that I don't have very long until we go to Universal Studios. So let's get this hood attached because once we do that, we can move on to like hypothetically fun details and stuff. Oh, okay, enjoy a time lapse. So the final step is going to be connecting all these little places where I didn't like fully connect uh, all the hexagons. Cause I think I would notice those, but I don't think someone looking at it for the first time is gonna be like, hmm, some of those hexagons are not connected properly. So I do think, well, obviously first I have to weave in all the ends, but then I feel like the important thing to do is the ribbing on the edges of the sleeves and the bottom of the jacket. <sighs> I was just saying, at least I don't have to make any more hexagons. I want to make pockets. That's fine. It's fine. It'll be very simple, very simple. Four or five hexagons, no half hexagons, nothing complicated to make my brain hurt. Just simple hexagons, solid hexagons, because we don't want anything falling out of hexagons with no holes. It's all good. It's fine. Um, I'm going to weave in the ends now, and then I'll make the pockets and attach the pockets and then I'll be done with glue. So, we finally got working pockets the other side too. Ha, ha. Not gonna lie, I am looking forward to um, eventually water blocking this and trying to smooth it out a little bit, but uh, I'm pretty happy for now. Good morning.
So yesterday was pretty productive. I did the ribbing on the sleeves and I finished the ribbings for the front of the jacket. Here's the one that's attached and it looks really good. The only problem is I think you'll remember the back of the jacket is longer than the front of the jacket. So yesterday I made this thinner ribbing. I thought I would attach it to the bottom of the back and then sort of just like connect it to the front and it's just the front looks so much longer than the back. It looks really weird. So I I removed this and then went to bed. I feel like there are two things that I can do. One is attach the ribbing over the longer uh, part of the back, which isn't horrible. I'd be willing to do that. I'd rather not. I just don't like having the doubled up thickness. But first what I'm going to do is try attaching the other front of the ribbing and then working off of that and making the same length of rib ribbing and it will just extend longer, cover my hips better. And then if that doesn't work, I'll frog it and cover up the bottom of the back. I will say it is annoying that you can't cut crochet material, otherwise I just cut off the bottom and stitch it up. But uh, you know, we work with what we got. I connected the ribbing to the overhang of the back and then I've just sort of stitched out anchor points to connect the ribbing that I'm about to make to and also just to draw out sort of what I'm cutting off here. And actually because it's, you know, it's a 3D cardigan object sort of thing, I was actually able to not take off like a straight line. I've kind of made this curve instead and I'm really hoping that that will look okay. Otherwise, of course, I will cut it off and just do a straight line and it will be fine and it'll be good and fine and okay. Here's hoping that this looks good. So now just making... I don't know, like two, three feet of ribbing or something. Since I'm about to go on my trip, I thought I would get one more shot uh, from this view where you can see how the cardigan uh, looks right before I start decorating it and packing it up for Universal Studios. Well, for California, visiting, and then Universal Studios. Here's the pattern that we started with, and here's where we ended up. Clearly it's a little smaller, honestly. Uh, it fits me better, so I'm happy with that. We've got the buttons, we've got the pockets, we've got sleeves with ribbing, we've got ribbing on the bottom. Honestly, I am super pleased with how this is coming so far. We're going to do little decorations. I already have two spikes for the spikes on the blue shell. Those are at least going to go on the hood. And then I'm thinking maybe like some wings for the back because the blue shell also has wings to catch up to first place. Two things. One, we are in California already. It is in the high 70s. I am melting and um, I'm supposed to wear a cardigan to an amusement park. What was I thinking? Second thing, um, I still need to make the wings for the back of the cardigan and I'm spending most of today visiting um, my new nephew. So might be crocheting while hanging with the parents of the baby. I tried using the hotel iron to steam this this morning because acrylic yarn melts really easily. Didn't turn out how I wanted, which is fine. So we're gonna go back to plan A, which is um, water blocking in the hotel tub. Something that I forgot about water blocking is that you rely on towels to soak up a lot of the water before air drying, and hotel towels are not known for their absorbency. Also, hotel showers sometimes have the curtain rod bow outwards to give you more room while you're showering, but that means if you're trying to hang dry something from the rod, it drips on the floor. So I am uh, wet, so, so, so I, I got wet from um, the thing and uh, I decided to pull it out uh, or off of the thing because, hold on, you'll see. So it was just too heavy and look at this. One of my hexagons has ripped, which means others might have ripped and I do not know and that is stressing me out. Um, and I don't have any blue yarn, so I don't even know if I can fix that. So I'm having a time. Emergency Michael's trip. 
that's not it that's not it that's it right that's it that's that's it For unrelated reasons, we stopped by a Target where we once again saw premonitions of what was to come. Oh my God, you're kidding me. Oh my God, guys. And I got to live my dream of being pelted by a blue shell. This is the bigger one. Look at that. Look, look, look. Look how messed up that got. Oh. Thank you.